Solving General Chemistry Problems Thermodynamics The great utility of formation reactions lies not in the reactions themselves, but rather in the ways they can be used to calculate thermodynamic information for unknown reactions. You have learned about state functions, and this is where their importance becomes so evident. Recall that the idea of a state property or a state function is that during some change of the system, a chemical reaction for instance, the change in the value of that state function does not depend on the path taken, but only on the beginning and ending states. The most extensive tables in thermodynamics consists of formation data for all known substances. The formation reaction is, again, that which considers the formation of the substance from the appropriate elements and their standard states. The enthalpy of formation, then, is the enthalpy change that would be measured when those elements react to form that substance. The formation enthalpy can be positive or negative depending upon the substance. A table of enthalpy of formation data reports data on the assumption that in the formation reaction, the substance of interest has the stoichiometric coefficient of 1. An important point to remember, that should be obvious, is that the enthalpy of formation of the elements in their standard states is 0 kilojoules per mole. This should be obvious because the formation reaction in such a case would be the element reacting to become itself. The start and end points are the same. Here's how formation data is used. What is the standard enthalpy of reaction for the following process? Zinc sulfide and oxygen react to form zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. So how does formation data help to answer this question? Because we are interested in state functions in, in particular enthalpy, we can imagine the process to occur as follows. Imagine the reactants to be broken up into their constituent elements. Such processes would be the reverse of the relevant formation process. Then imagine those elements being recombined to form the products. This would be the formation reaction for those substances. The overall enthalpy change of this hypothetical process must be the same as for the direct process implied by the original equation since enthalpy is a state function. The reverse of the formation processes for the reactants, and when we reverse a reaction, remember we change the sign of the associated changes in thermodynamic properties, and the formation processes for the products implies that we should add the negative of the standard enthalpies of formation for the reactants to the standard enthalpies of formation for the products. We add the products and we subtract the reactants. This leads to the well-known mnemonic phrase of products minus reactants. This is used for all thermodynamic properties when using formation data. Remember that it is products minus reactants because we are using data that is organized for the formation of substances. In a reaction, we take apart the reactants and assemble the parts, the elements, back into the products, hence products minus reactants. I emphasize this point because you will also learn about another approach involving what are called bond energies, which will be shown to be used in just the opposite fashion, and the reason why will make perfect sense. So back to the equation at hand. We look up in tables the enthalpy of formation for each of the participants in the reaction. One place to look for this information is Wikipedia. It gives the following values. Minus 204.6 for zinc sulfide, minus 350.5 for zinc oxide, and minus 296.8 for zinc, uh, sulfur dioxide, all in kilojoules per mole. Now I didn't list a value for oxygen. Why? Well, because this is an element in its standard state, so its enthalpy of formation is, by definition, zero. So imagine the process whereby the reactants are returned to their elemental states and then those elements are rearranged to form the products. The standard enthalpy change must be products minus reactants, or 2 times minus 350.5 plus 2 times minus 296.8 minus 2 times minus 204.6 minus 0 for minus 885.4 kilojoules per mole. As long as our tables have the formation data for each of the participants in the reaction, we can determine the standard enthalpy change and other state properties with equal ease for any reaction by just remembering products minus reactants. Another example. 
What is the standard enthalpy of reaction for this process? Iron oxide reacts with 3-carbon monoxide to form elemental iron and 3-carbon dioxide molecules. First thing is to look up the formation data. We find the following values. Minus 824.2 for iron oxide, minus 110.5 for carbon monoxide, minus 393.5 for carbon dioxide, and of course zero for elemental iron. Now since we are using formation data, we use products minus reactants to find the standard enthalpy of reaction between iron oxide and carbon monoxide, which is minus 24.8 kilojoules per mole. Interestingly, this reaction is important in the refining of iron ore. The carbon monoxide extracts the oxygen from the iron ore to produce the iron metal. Now some things to remember. It's products minus reactants. Be sure to correctly include the stoichiometric coefficients. Watch your signs carefully. There are a lot of minus minuses. Watch out for how the arithmetic has to be done. Remember that the per mole is referring to per mole of reaction events as written in the equation. So where do you think all of this formation data comes from? From experiments on reactions where all of the formation data is known except for one species. We perform the experiment in a calorimeter, measure the heat of reaction, and then calculate back for the formation enthalpy of the unknown species. Consider this reaction. Methane and chlorine can react to form carbon tetrachloride and hydrochloric acid. If we know the formation enthalpy of methane at HCl, then by measuring the standard enthalpy change for this reaction, we can determine the standard enthalpy of formation of carbon tetrachloride. We look up the formation data that is known. We measure the enthalpy of reaction experimentally. We set up the equation of products minus reactants, except this time one of the products is the unknown. Rearrange the equation and solve for the unknown standard enthalpy of formation for carbon tetrachloride. Its value is minus 102.9 kilojoules per mole. Scientists over the years have worked their way through as many materials as they can in order to create the extensive tables of thermodynamic properties we now have. So very much of industry depends upon these tables to continue to move our advanced technology society forward.